In the beginning of Operation Iraqi Freedom, one of the many missions of the 10th Special Forces Group, a part of Operation Viking Hammer, was to make their way south from Tatak to secure the city of Kirkuk. Defending Kirkuk was a mechanized division of the Iraqi army, positioned high along a ridge line and supported by heavy artillery. The enemy had tanks, BMPs, BTRs, and anti-aircraft weapons, and was providing heavy resistance to the SF team's forward movement. This Iraqi unit had to be neutralized before the SF team could make further progress towards its objective of Kirkuk. Senior Master Sergeant John Knipe, a joint terminal air controller, was providing support to the Special Forces Unit commander and his team of 12 men. Knipe had the responsibility of identifying the enemy locations and to call in the close air support required to take out the enemy resistance. Until we really got up on that ridge line and we were only about 1,500 meters away from, from these dug-in positions and, and some of these heavy Iraqi forces, um, we didn't know um, how, how large of a force it really was. And when we got right up to the ridge line, and um, we kind of took on a little bit more than we could chew at that time. And, and, those, and they, they were throwing some, some lead back at us and some artillery. And we ran out of, we actually ran out of anti-tank missiles and, and some of the direct fire weapons that we had. And, and we had to, at that time, kind of pick up and retreat back about two kilometers and, and take a breath and, and decide what we were gonna do next. This encounter with the enemy proved to the team and night that they needed air support with a heavy weapon load. There was a lot of activity on the ridge line, with multiple soft-skin support vehicles moving constantly. They had taken small arms fire, heavy artillery, and even AAA that was being used by the Iraqis as a direct fire weapon. The obvious thing is you want to amass as much firepower as possible on, on the forces that are in front of you, as quickly as possible. When I called in uh, for that last airstrike, they gave me the B-52, and then just to make things even better for us, it was loaded with 16 um, CBU-105s and uh, 27 Mark 117s. Referencing his target arrays with grid coordinates drawn on his map, Knipe briefed his team and ground commander with the mission plan for the utilization of the weapons on board the B-52. Since the sensor-fused weapon had not yet been used by this team, there was some hesitation. To this point, we hadn't had any of those uh, any of that type of munitions uh, dropped and the special forces guys that I was with had never seen um, a CBU-105 or knew what, what that type of munition was. A lot of times CBUs cannot be used on the ground when you can have follow-on friendly forces go through that area because of the dud rate. We felt very comfortable that the CBU-105 having a zero dud rate w would be a factor at all in, in and forces moving through that area. So it was an easy call for us to make to, to drop CB-105s um, as opposed to if it, if it was a CBU-89 or CBU-87. I just knew that I had about four kilometers of ridge line or more that I needed to have covered. So when I sent the request up that I wanted the whole load to come out of the B-52, there was, initially there was silence. The weaponier on the B-52 was trying to, trying to crunch the numbers and trying to see what kind of footprint that, that those CB-105s were going were gonna to put out. And he actually told me that those 16 weapons would be able to cover the entire footprint of, uh, of what the enemy disposition was uh, on my map. This was probably the best weapon at the time. For, for what we were looking at, because there was a lot of targets out there that were emitting heat, but that we just could not get our eyes on at, at the time. When you see the contrail coming, and you know that this strike is, is yours, and, and you're just real happy because you know a lot of the firing that you were taking is, is gonna stop here shortly. You're not gonna be facing the same amount of enemy troops in about six minutes than you were six minutes ago. At first, it looked like um, it looked like a mini airborne infiltration, because you had all these little parachutes falling down, and then it was just because it happened in a split second. When the jets went off and they fired to their targets, all of a sudden now there was a, a, a small puff in the air, and then and then explosions on the ground, and. 
And in my particular lane I was watching, there was a vehicle that was traversing uh, the road going from my side of the ridge line over to the, to the back side. And I saw one of the weapons just coming down in the parachute and fly right while the vehicle was moving, fly right and hit the vehicle and that was when it stopped the vehicle. And then I saw other, other skeets hitting close by and around where there were some other dug in positions just around that vehicle. And, and then the other team members as well had the same effect where everybody was yelling, wow, I can't believe it, it, it just hit that, wow, it's hitting that, you know, that trench line. The CBU actually found those targets that were maybe 10 meters behind that foxhole or, or that vehicle that, that I hadn't seen because it was dug in behind and it was in a defilade. So it does a lot of the work and a lot of the targeting for me. So all over the ridge line where the heat sources were, you know, the skeets were hitting and everyone was, was, was pretty elated and pretty excited about, about what was going on. I released 16 CBU-105s and destroyed more enemy and, and took out more enemy vehicles and took over more real estate than I could have ever taken out with 16 J-dams or 16 dumb bombs. And in a matter of five minutes, I had just cleared what possibly was going to take us another week. And then, God forbid, had we br had to bring conventional forces in there to fight those forces um, on the ground, um, the loss of American lives. So we, had, we didn't have to lose a single American life, and yet we had treated a huge, a huge um, amount of enemy troops over a large, vast area. The CBU-105s definitely gave us definitely gave us the edge you know, that day on the battlefield. If you're lucky enough um, to be a controller and you put a request in, and, they t and the aircraft shows up and briefs you that he has CBU-105s, that uh, you, it's going to be a good day for you, and it's going to be a bad day, you know, for the enemy.